Welcome to the Human K Channel. Today, we'll look at the work of David Allen Kolb, a well-known sociologist and educational theorist. Kolb's study on experiential learning and learning styles had a profound impact on education. David Kolb and his wife Alice founded Experience-Based Learning Systems in 1981 with the goal of furthering research on experiential learning. David Kolb has made major contributions to the study of organizational behavior, individual and social transformation, career development, and professional education, in addition to experiential learning. According to the experiential learning theory, our learning journey involves setting goals, thinking, planning, experimenting, reflecting, observing, and reviewing. By engaging in these activities, we integrate the cognitive, emotional, and physical aspects of learning. The experiential learning theory model offers a holistic view of the learning process and a comprehensive framework for adult development. It aims to explain the complexities and variations among adult learners within a single framework, with experience as the driving force. As we explore the experiential learning theory model, we encounter two modes of gaining experience, concrete experience, which involves apprehension and abstract conceptualization, which focuses on comprehension. Additionally, there are two modes of transforming the experience to facilitate learning, reflective observation and active experimentation. When we combine these four modes, we form a four-stage learning cycle that learners go through during experiential learning. It begins with a concrete experience, leading to observation and reflection. Then, learners piece together their thoughts to create abstract concepts that guide future actions. Finally, they actively test these concepts, leading to new experiences and the renewal of the learning cycle. In order for effective learning to occur, the dialectical entities of apprehension comprehension and intention extension must be integrated. Apprehension understanding is the process of understanding an experience, while intention extension is the process of changing an experience. Perception of experience without transformation or transformation without perception does not lead to acquiring knowledge. They must work hand in hand. Perception alone is not sufficient, something must be done with it. Similarly, transformation alone cannot represent learning, as there must be something to be transformed. The integration of both aspects is vital. The experiential learning theory model sheds light on why learners approach learning experiences differently and yet flourish. Individuals may excel in specific areas of learning, but they must continually choose which abilities to use and resolve conflicting abilities on the continuum. If a learner is more comfortable with concrete perception and active experimentation, they must also engage in abstract conceptualization and reflective observation to complete the learning cycle effectively. It is about embracing discomfort and challenging oneself to grow. This lies at the heart of the experiential learning theory model and Kolb's view of the adult learner. We must recognize that learners have unique strengths and preferences, but they must also develop skills in areas they consider less comfortable. Now, we will be discussing the various applications of experiential learning theory within educational systems, particularly on college campuses. Let's start with cooperative education, or co-op. It's a structured educational strategy that integrates classroom studies with work-based learning related to a student's academic or career goals. Co-op allows students to gain field-based experiences that combine theory and practice. This partnership involves students, educational institutions, and work sites such as businesses, government agencies, and nonprofit organizations. Similarly, internships are temporary positions, often paid or unpaid, that provide on-the-job training. They are beneficial for college and university students, as well as high school students or postgraduates seeking career skills. Internships allow students to gain practical experience, explore career interests, build networks, and sometimes even earn academic credit. Next, we have service learning, a teaching and learning strategy that combines community service with instruction and reflection. It enriches the learning experience, fosters civic responsibility, and strengthens communities. Service learning can be organized within educational institutions or community organizations. It helps students connect academic content with real-world issues, providing a deeper understanding and promoting active citizenship. Now, let's explore a field course scenario as an example of experiential learning. Imagine a university offering a course in wildlife and research management. 
In this course, students are introduced to vegetation sampling techniques in the classroom, but they truly learn them by applying these techniques in the field. They are given a goal statement to differentiate between two woodlots on campus based on their vegetation structures. The students must determine the objectives of the project, collaborate on sampling methods, collect data, and reflect on their experiences. By engaging in this hands-on process, they gain a deeper understanding of the techniques and their applicability in real-world situations. Another effective application of experiential learning is role play. It has been used for educational and training purposes, allowing participants to immerse themselves in simulated situations and learn through experience. Let's consider a role play scenario centered around a controversy involving the Lakota Sioux, their sacred site, and the conflict with rock climbers and the National Park Service. After watching a documentary and researching the issues, students assume the roles of different stakeholders, such as the Lakota, rock climbers, the National Park Service, and the courts. Through extensive discussions, presentations, and a mock hearing, they gain multiple perspectives, develop advocacy skills, and learn conflict resolution. Finally, we have simulations, gaming, and e-learning as additional applications of experiential learning. Simulations and gaming offer participants the opportunity to engage in decision-making processes, analyze outcomes, and reflect on their experiences. Similarly, e-learning can incorporate multimedia resources, discussions, and creative tasks to enhance the entire experiential learning cycle. Now, we'll review experiential learning theory and its critics. Kolb's experiential learning theory has advanced adult education, but experts have criticized it. Let's examine this theory's flaws. The experiential learning theory is criticized for not explaining and exploring concrete experiences in the learning cycle. Emotion is not defined, which limits the examination of concrete experience. The methodology prioritizes contemplative observation, abstract thinking, and active exploration over concrete experience. Another issue is that concrete experience is unrealistic. Some experts believe that direct and concrete experience doesn't fit real-world learning circumstances. The argument argues that the theory must handle these challenges to remain practical. Kolb's ideas are often ambiguous, critics say. This ambiguity might cause inconsistent applications and impair the theory's logic. Some believe that the experiential learning theory model is a mishmash of concepts from different thinkers and lacks coherence. A more critical analysis of Kolb's work reveals that his experiential learning theory model is essentially a marketing gimmick to sell his learning styles inventory. This viewpoint disputes the theory's motivations and scientific validity. The experiential learning theory also emphasizes too little non-reflective experience. Unlike Kolb, John Dewey, a notable educator, stressed the primacy of non-reflective experience through habitual acts. Experiential learning theory's lack of non-reflective experience discussion is criticized. Experiential learning theory neglects social experience. The paradigm emphasizes individual learning over social group learning. Critics say the theory would benefit from examining the learner's social setting and how groups learn through shared experiences. Despite these objections, adult education should embrace the experiential learning theory. Kolb's focus on the learner's experiences and learning strengths builds knowledge. The model's dialectical entities allow learning process tracking. Kolb also understands learner effectiveness by using both established and underdeveloped skills to complete the learning cycle. However, the experiential learning theory model's flaws necessitate a new paradigm. A revised model would incorporate Kolb's insights and address the shortcomings. This technique starts with the student's subjective world and includes emotional inventory and introspective observation. It would allow active experimentation, hypothesis generation, and in-depth experience analysis in a social or individual environment. In conclusion, the experiential learning theory has been criticized for neglecting non-reflective experience, concrete experience, instantaneous experience, and concepts. The theory strengths in recognizing individual experiences and integrating the learning cycle should not be underestimated. Addressing these flaws and creating a new model can help us comprehend experiential learning and its applications.